I'm so sorry, ma'am. I know you need this medicine, but it looks like it's not covered by your insurance. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to deny that one. Wait, who are you? I'm your insurance company's pharmacy benefit manager. I get paid based on the price of a medicine, and I don't make as much money off this one. No one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. If you are a lover of affirmations or you've just heard about how powerful they can be, then you are going to love the Daily Affirmations for Women podcast, created by the Women's Meditation Network and hosted by the amazing Jodi Agard. Every morning, you'll receive an episode that is dedicated to one specific affirmation so you can have the space to reflect on it and receive the power within it. Follow and start listening now to the Daily Affirmations for Women podcast on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2433. What happens to my debt when I die? By Christine Lucan of christinelucan.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I serenade you with the sweet sounds of personal finance knowledge from some of the best money blogs on the planet. So with that, let's get right to today's reading and start optimizing your life. What Happens to My Debt When I Die? by Christine Lucan of christinelucan.com What happens to my debt when I die? Does it just go away? Or will my family be responsible to pay it for me? The answer depends on a few factors, including the type of debt, if you have assets when you die, and if you're legally married or not. We generally don't like to dwell on the fact that we will all die eventually. However, if you don't make proper arrangements for your debts and assets after your death, you might leave behind a mess for your loved ones to clean up. What happens to my debt when I die? I recently talked about what happens to your money and other assets when you die. But what about your debt? Mortgage, car loan, credit cards, medical bills, and student loans? Listen on to find out. What happens to my mortgage when I die? If you own a home jointly with your spouse, the house or condo transfers to your husband or wife. They'll be responsible to continue paying any debt associated with the property, whether it's a mortgage or a home equity loan. Typically, both spouses' names are on the deed to the property and the loan. As long as the surviving spouse continues making the payments, nothing really changes. What if your spouse can't afford the current mortgage payment because of the loss of your income? He or she will either have to refinance the loan or sell the house and buy something more affordable. This is why I recommend you have sufficient term life insurance on both spouses so the surviving one is able to stay in the home. What if you own a home with a mortgage, but you're not married? Well, you better have a will or estate plan that designates the beneficiary of your property so it doesn't go into probate. Typically, your heir decides whether or not they want to sell the property. If the person wants to keep it and there's a balance on the mortgage, he or she will be required to pay it off. If your heir decides to sell it, once the real estate commission and the mortgage is paid, the person will receive the remaining money as their inheritance. The process is very similar for loans on cars, motorcycles, boats, ATVs, and the like. What happens to my credit card debt when I die? If you have credit card debt when you die, your estate is responsible to pay it. This means if you have any funds in your bank accounts, they must be used by your heirs to pay off your debt. If you're married and your spouse is already listed on your accounts, they'll be responsible to continue paying on them. If you're not married and there isn't any cash available to pay off your credit card debt, the bank is generally left holding the bag. According to Credit Karma, quote, family members of a deceased person are typically not obligated to use their own money to pay for credit card debt after death, end quote. This happened when my mother-in-law passed away several years ago. There wasn't enough cash in her bank account to cover her credit card bills. As her financial power of attorney, I sent copies of her death certificate to each of her creditors, along with a note explaining that she didn't have any assets in her estate to pay them. However, if you have a co-signer on a particular credit card, that person becomes solely responsible for paying the debt. This is one of the many reasons I strongly caution against co-signing credit cards or any other loan even for a family member. What happens to my student loan debt when I die? As you might already know, student loans are exempt from bankruptcy, so the only way to get rid of them is to pay them off. 
But what happens if you die and there's still an outstanding balance on your student loan? According to The Motley Fool, quote, if you have a federal student loan, then the federal government will discharge any remaining debt upon your death. That means your balance will get zeroed out and your loved ones won't have to repay the student loan after you die, end quote. Private student loans, on the other hand, are not required to discharge the balance if you die and will likely move to collect from your estate. If you're married, most states don't allow lenders to collect student debt balances from surviving spouses, even if the loans were taken out during the marriage. But if your husband or wife co-signed on your student loan, that's an entirely different story. If you have a co-signer on your private student loan, the person may be required to pay your balance when you die. Some lenders do take compassion on the family of the deceased and voluntarily release the co-signer from the responsibility of the student loan. But I have a feeling that's the exception to the rule. What happens to my medical debt when I die? If there isn't enough money in your estate when you die to cover medical bills, they typically go unpaid. If your loved one signs as a responsible party for a medical treatment or a procedure, the provider will likely pursue them for payment if you die and leave the debt unpaid. Years ago, when I worked as an HR manager for a manufacturing company, one of my employees received a paycheck garnishment notice for tens of thousands of dollars. This person co-signed for an experimental cancer treatment for their mother in hopes it would save her life. Unfortunately, the treatment didn't work and the mother passed away. The employee ignored the bills for several years, thinking the medical facility had given up hope of collecting. However, the provider took the case to court and received a judgment against this employee. That person ended up with a three-year garnishment of several hundred dollars per paycheck until it was paid in full. Here's the bottom line. Excessive debt is bad news all the way around. Now you know the answer to the question, what happens to my debt when I die? It's important to know what types of debt you have right now and how it could affect the family you leave behind when you die. You just listened to the post titled, What Happens to My Debt When I Die? by Christine Lucan of christinelucan.com. At KPMG, it's people who make the difference for their clients with talented teams leveraging the right technology to uncover insights that illuminate opportunity. KPMG advisors embed themselves in their clients' business, working together as true team members to help grow and transform their enterprise. Ready to make the difference together? Visit their website at visit.kpmg.us backslash transformation to learn more. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I know you need this medicine, but it looks like it's not covered by your insurance. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to deny that one. Wait, who are you? I'm your insurance company's pharmacy benefit manager. I get paid based on the price of a medicine, and I don't make as much money off this one. No one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. I think this article provides even more motivation for treating debt as an emergency. For me, the key to getting out of debt was a deep mindset shift. When I discovered the FIRE movement and started devouring blogs about money, I realized that I've been brainwashed by consumerism my whole life. I had to intentionally undo that brainwashing by building a desire for debt freedom. How did I do that? I did a little brainwashing of my own by reading about personal finance and expanding my view of what was possible with my money. And when you tune in every day to Optimal Finance Daily, you're doing the same thing. I heard a powerful quote the other day from Emmanuel Achu, who said, the reason why most people fail is that they give up what they want most for what they want now. Getting in touch with what you want most, like financial freedom or peace of mind, or full autonomy over your time can be the weapon you use to fight off your consumerist conditioning. Analyzing debts and creating a budget are super important for anyone trying to get out of debt. If you're like me and got into debt due to mindless spending, the cure for that is awareness. Allow yourself to really see the full picture of your debt and your spending habits. This will enable you to come up with a plan to get out of debt. Tracking every dollar you spend may sound annoying, but it's not nearly as annoying as being literally buried in debt. That brings us to the end for today, though. Thanks so much for listening all the way through, and I'll catch you tomorrow on our next episode, where your optimal life awaits.